Hey guys, um, so Libby is napping and um, I kept her home today because uh, we got to spend the day with So So and Scarlett. So Miss Olivia and Mallory um, could go to a doctor's appointment. So she got to stay home with me today. And let me tell you, this is a very different child when she ain't got no nap, okay? So letting her nap, and I don't even want to move her in the house because I want her to get her nap out uh, before we go to CrossFit tonight. Um, and so I thought, what a perfect time to share with you my heart on a subject. And I can tell you, these have been coming more and more often. Uh, a couple years back, like I used to make videos pretty much every day, and I would tell cool stories and just share motivational, inspirational uh, heart talk, right? Well, went through a couple years where I was really dealing with some very serious things, uh, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, all the elise. And I can tell you, healing has taken place in a lot of places in my life. And so I can feel these talks coming more regularly now. Um, one little shift is that um, they aren't other people's stories. Uh, nowadays, I can feel that my story has power and it has the ability uh, to shine light in other folks' lives um, to illuminate the places that are broken, seem broken, you're not definitely broken, but there can be wounds inside, right, that seem very broken. And so nowadays, I'm just cool sharing my story. Maybe we'll throw a couple little stories in there on top of it, but for the most part, I finally feel free enough to just talk boldly about my story. Um, today, I want to talk to you very openly about smoking. And I know, I know, I know, there are some very, very, very deep thoughts about the subject. And because of that, I want to share my own personal experience with you so that you might better understand how to love uh, folks that you know that smoke cigarettes, um, me, and folks you come in contact with and the way that you treat them. Um, I can tell you full well that um, I have been <laughs> on quite the journey. And I've had times in my life where I have quit smoking and life stressors have picked back up. And because I'm human uh, and because I got a lot of excuses, um, I also pick it back up, right? But more importantly, I want to tell you that there have been much grander addictions in my life that have been much more detrimental than smoking could ever be. And the people that you love that smoke cigarettes, I'm quite sure have also had other addictions in their life that were much more dangerous and much more disease causing mostly up here, than cigarettes could ever be. You know, I've had um, people in the fitness community that I've walked up to to ask a question, and they may smell smoke on me, and they've literally said, do I smell smoke on you? Like, why are you doing this sport when you smoke? And do you see this look on my face? because this is the look that of disgust that they gave me. And can I just say that those were some of the most heartbreaking moments for me as a smoker, more so than my family pointing out that I was killing myself on a daily basis, more so than doing my best to get out of the walkway of buildings because I don't want to put my disease causing addiction in their face. I don't expect people to put up with my issue. I'm doing good to put up with it myself, right? But to have someone in the fitness community, multiple someones, 
point out what a gross addiction that I had was much more heartbreaking than anybody else could have ever said and done to me. You know why? Because in the midst of battling this thing that I don't even want in my life, to have someone in the sport that I'm in to um, be ugly to me about something they know nothing about in my life um, really, really hurt. And, um, and I get it. They've had people die of lung disease. They know the scientific proof of what smoking does. And, and they love me, right? Here is what I want to share with you. Everyone, everyone is battling an addiction of some kind. Even you who are listening to this talk. It's impossible that you're not, okay? Some people are addicted to porn. Their wives don't know. Their husbands don't know. Their parents don't know. Some people are addicted to gossiping. No matter how hard they try, they turn around and they're talking about somebody else. Some folks, they battle um, a weak mind. They constantly think that they're no good. They constantly struggle with value and worth. They are addicted to feeling worthless. Some folks struggle with alcoholism. I can tell you, in my life, it was much, much, much more dangerous. And most of you may not even know that. <laughs> and it wasn't years and years ago, okay? It was months and months ago, okay? <laughs> um, some people are addicted to prescription medicine. They literally will take their prescribed pills and will chop them up to get them to work faster. I know folks who cannot go throughout an entire day without drinking just so they can make it through regular life. I know folks who cannot stop having sex with multiple partners without feeling like they are no good. I know folks who literally cannot get out of bed without shoving food into their mouth. They feel sad, they eat. They feel happy, they eat. They feel celebratory, they eat. They feel crappy, they eat. They eat and eat and eat and eat, and they are addicted to food. Every single one of us have got some addiction somewhere. And I'm telling you, the very worst thing that you can do for someone who smokes cigarettes is to point out that they should quit, okay? This is not enabling. It's not enabling to love a smoker. They know you want them to quit. They already know that. They want to quit. Even the people who say, I love smoking. I love the social part of having a cigarette. I can't have a beer without the balance of a cigarette in the other hand. I give you my word. They don't like the cough. They don't like the way their breath smells. They don't like the fact that their clothes smell. They don't like the fact that everywhere they go, they have to begin thinking about where the smoking area is. They don't like it either. And the very most loving thing you can do is not constantly point it out. They don't want it either. Hear my heart. It is on my list of to-dos. And I absolutely, absolutely know I'm going to get to a place that I don't desire to smoke. The same way that I did not quit drinking. I literally lost the desire. 
like I feel like a completely different person. I have no words to explain how I went my entire adult life and cannot tell you. Well, yeah, I can. It was about five weeks ago. I had a glass of sangria with my shrimp and my steak, and it paired nicely, and I did not want a second glass. You know why? I was not running from a single solitary thing, nor was I trying to achieve a buzz or drunkenness. I literally enjoyed the glass of sangria five weeks ago, and not once. There's beer in my house right now. My son drinks. I have no desire for it, and I can't quite tell you why, except for the fact that I just don't. I never quit. I just lost the desire. I know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that I will not quit smoking, and the more you remind me that I need to quit, the more I'm going to be bound to it, and the more you remind your loved ones that they need to quit the more you are holding them to it. That what I don't want to do, I end up doing. That what I want to do, I freaking don't do. That's what it says in the Bible. So quit pointing out that your friends and family members should quit smoking and allow them to arrive at it on their own. For that is true healing. Your Bible beating, your constant reminding, and your acts of love are not accomplishing a single thing except for holding your loved one to the very thing that they wish they were not bound to. Just my two cents, and that's coming from a smoker. Get it? Got it? Good. Love y'all. Word. <laughs>